Hello and thanks for joining me in this short tutorial for Film Wash Color Effects for DaVinci Resolve Volume 5 Commercial Color Grades Made Easy. And what we'll be looking at in this tutorial is the basic usage of Curious Turtles Film Wash, how we bring in the power grades and different sort of uh, ways of using them. Now, because these are power grades, the actual installation is very simple indeed. If we just want to use things for a, uh, a single project, in the color tab, we just come into our stills, we right click anywhere in here, and we go to import. Then just navigate to the Film Wash Power Grades folder, which is part of the Film Wash download. And you'll notice we separated these out into three separate folders. We have Film Stock Homage, which has got a collection of interpretations of popular film stocks. We've got Cross Color, which are some creative looks that we have to uh, explore. And we have Film Wash Cross Process, which are some slightly stronger cross processing looks here. We're going to start with the, uh, the film stock homage here, and we'll just change this to enable all JPEG files. And I'm going to use Command A or Control A to select all, then hit open. And this will then import all of our power grades into our stills one page. And we get a lovely little thumbnail coming up here as well. Now, if I wanted to apply any of these, so it will, we'll apply the first one, which is the elite color. We can just right click on it and go add correction here. And this will then apply that look to our footage here. And you can see we just uh, get a quick before and after. It's not the most extreme change that we've got going on, but then that's not what it's designed to be. It's, it's designed to replicate and interpret a, a particular film stock. Now, if we did want to make this look stronger or softer, we could very simply do that by going into the key tab down here and then just changing the output gain. So at the moment, the gain is set to 0.5. If we want to make the look weaker, we take that down to zero. And at zero, this is just the original file again. We're basically bypassing this node. And if we take this to one, this is the ultimate strength. We can go above one if we want to but that won't have any other effect on the uh, on this particular look. So we take it to its most extreme there, get a before and after. Let's zoom in on that a little bit, see the actual size, get a before and after. If that's not the look you're after, let's uh, base memory, actually reset all of that there, and then zoom this back to fit. We can double click on any of these stills here and get a quick preview of the sort of things that it's going to be going to be doing. So we can see what it's going to be doing to uh, to some of our colors here. And we'll find one that we like. I think I like the Agfa Vista 200 here. So let's toggle that white back off again and we'll apply that one there. So add correction onto that one. Now you can see here that it's now created four different nodes for us rather than the uh, just adding the one that we had previously. Now don't be too concerned about that. The only thing you really need to do if you want to um, just change the strength of this particular look is to come to the is to come to the second at the bottom here, the one that's a little bit faded because that is the one which is uh, set to 0.5 in the game. So here again, we can take that down, blend that back, or take it up to one and get a stronger effect going on. So there's our before, and here's our after. Before and after. Well, that's really, really straightforward. Now let's, let's take a look at some of the other ones now. I could, if I wanted to, add the other film wash power grades to, to the same stills page here. But what I'm going to do is come down and go add stills page here and create a new blank stills. Now, this is really powerful within DaVinci Resolve, either to keep your own uh, grade separate to, uh, to the film wash ones, or just to be able to have a, uh, an easier look through um, 
the different power grades you've got here as well. So let's uh, come over to our cross color. We'll do the same thing. We'll import in the JPEGs. Now I really like the look that we've got going on here for this particular project. But what I want to do is, is take it up a notch a little bit more. And maybe I want to, uh, to cool it down a little bit. So here I can and take a look here and maybe let's, well, let's have a look at the Ice Queen here. Now, if I just added this correction as we did before, it will get rid of the other film stock uh, look that I had on before. And I don't really want to do that. So I'm just going to undo. Now, if I instead right click on this and go to append node graph instead, that's just going to add that for me after the node that I had selected there. So I can now mix multiple film washes together to create an even more unique look. So here's the before, here's the after. So let's uh, again zoom this to actual size, go before and after. And this has given it a really uh, a different sort of mood than we had before. nice and urban. What if we wanted to, instead of taking it uh, the cooler route, warm it up just a little bit? Well, maybe we can go with something like the, uh, the modern sepia. Let's append that node graph there. That's quite strong. I can take that node off just by clicking on the, uh, the bottom of it there, and that will just disable that node. Maybe it's a little bit too evening time. So let's uh, come in and take our gain down on that a little bit. So maybe only mix in 20, 23% on that. So that's given us a really different sort of look than we had before. And the cool thing is we can, um, we can explore these out a little bit more. If we just right click on the, on the clip in the timeline, I can add a, a new version Let's go to my uh, remote version here. We copy all the marks onto that. I've now got a version two down here. So I can check whether I actually prefer the warmer or the cooler one. So let's maybe go for a, a creamy evening. Let's append that one there. And let's not kick that in too much. Take that maybe to 40 or 0.4, I should say. And now we can just, by right clicking and loading the different versions up, we've got our choice of which one to go for. Now, the really cool thing is we can save the combined looks out into our memory and use them across uh, multiple clips on the, uh, on the timeline here. What I'm going to do is show you a little, uh, a little time saver here as well. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is actually go to our nodes up here and add one before the current. So what this will do is add a new node right at the front before that one. And because we've got four nodes going in here, what I'm going to also do is just remap. Is to zoom in just a little bit. So you can see this a little bit better and remap it so both so both of the uh, the streams here are being fed from our first node rather than from the uh, the input of the clip and this is going to be really important later so let's uh, save this into our memory g down here and let's come over to our to our next clip here and we'll zoom out a little bit over here. Now, the reason I did that is that often the first node that we've got going on here is where we've done all of our primary corrections. So let's say, for example, I wanted to desaturate this, make it a little bit, a little bit darker, maybe make it even, and maybe I'll just push it a little bit warmer just so you can see this. Uh, a bit better, but, but generally the idea is to balance the clips up. So 
So what we've got is our first node here, which is balancing everything up and doing our, our primary color correction. If I just loaded in our memory G here, so memory is load G, what that's going to do is just completely blitz all of the work I've done here. So let's uh, undo that. Check it out. I've got my saturation set to 37.4. Load in memory G. That's now reset the saturation to uh, 50. Now I want to protect these, um, this primary color correction, no matter what happens on the other memories. So how can I do that? Well, if I right click again in the stills area here, when I do the copy grade right down the bottom, I can preserve a number of nodes. Uh, at the moment, it's set to preserve zero, so it's not saving any of the nodes, it's just writing over everything. If I set this to one, it's now going to protect the first node, my primary color here. And if I set it to two, if I had two nodes, it will, it will protect both of those as well. So let's see what happens now when I come in to load. From memory G. You can see on the first node my saturation is still set to 37.4. So it's actually protected all of the primary color grade that I've done on this uh, on this particular clip. Uh, and that was the reason that we added this blank one in at the, uh, at the front here. Now in this case it doesn't look particularly great with that um, with that uh, primary in there, but that's, you know, that was the whole point just so you could see uh, how we could protect things up. So it really can be, you know, incredibly simple to get some uh, very complex uh, looks going on by mixing and blending several of the film washes with your own grades. Now, what we've seen here with importing it into the stills, this is only valid for bringing in power grades for a particular project. If you're going to want to use these power grades on several projects without having to um, import things again and again and again, what we can do is just do the same as we did with the importing into the stills pages, but just import it into the power grade tab instead. So I'm going to import my cross processing here. Again, do the JPEG, select all, open those up, and, it's, uh, and it brings all of those in for me. Now let's see what happens when I start up a new project. So I'm going to call this Film Wash uh, Tutorials 2. Create that. You'll see that my stills pages have been reset and I've only got one of those up there now. But my power grades stay here forever for me to uh, add corrections to it as I want to. And let's go back to the uh, previous project we had before. Back into our color tab here. And you'll see we have our stills back in here, plus the power grades that we had previously. Uh, and all of these are also visible in our gallery tab down here, uh, which is where we can, if we want to, we can assign different memories or different uh, different power grades to different memories here as well. Cool, so that is really the uh, the basics for adding the, uh, the film wash effects to your project. In the next tutorial, what we're going to look at is how we apply those same ideas into a, uh, a larger workflow. And we're going to look at uh, actually grading a, a short sequence up and see how we apply the film wash to a range of clips. So join me in the next tutorial.